Alright, just finished uh, Griffin's. What is it? Jumper's Griffin's story? Um. It's based off a movie. Uh, I didn't see the movie, so I don't really have knowledge on the story or anything, but. I think this is a prequel or something, or. I heard the the main character of this game died in the movie or something, so that would that would make it a prequel. Um, and they also leave it on a cliffhanger, so yeah, it's pretty much a prequel. Um, Jumper is a, I guess you'd call it just pretty much a linear beat 'em up. Um, you know you have a melee weapon and no range attacks, just pure melee. And it does something interesting. Uh, your main character is a jumper, which allows basically he can teleport, I guess. So, what this means is when you're in combat, uh, let's say your enemy is facing you, okay? Like his, you're face to face. A button would attack the front of him. Let's say you used B button, you would attack from the right side. If you used X button, you would attack from the right side. If you hit Y, you would attack from the back side. And what happens is your enemies will be blocking, so it pretty much becomes a reflex game at that point. You know, you have to attack whichever side they're not blocking. If they're block, if they attack, you gotta dodge. And the controls are quite responsive in certain situations, but you know, sometimes uh, if you get too close to a wall, your camera can like get locked in place, and it just gets all messed up and stuff, and. Uh, just the camera in general, it's not really that good. Um, for some reason, whenever you go to the main menu, it like reverts your stuff, your controls to inverted. Don't really know why that's there. But I suppose it ain't that big of a video, considering all you have to do is just go into options and change it. But it's kind of annoying. So yeah, the gameplay doesn't really change at all. I mean, you'll pick up new weapons as you play through the game. I think there's like six in total. And once you pick up your new weapon, you know, you do a little bit more damage, that's about it. You know, you don't have like a faster swing speed or a slower swing speed at all. And wh also what happens is, um, when they're blocking, you'll have like a green point you can attack. So like, let's say they're guarding their front and their left. If you attack from the right or the back, you'll probably start a combo up. And then it says like, if you attack from the right side, you'll get more green energy. What happens when you get green energy is it transfers the, um, it like, it gives you like bullet time effect, I guess. It like slows time down and you pull off like a powerful combo. I didn't really know about it until near the end of the game, so I didn't really use it that much. But it is really helpful, especially for the later boss fights. Cut scenes are played out with like, I guess you'd call them like comic book visuals. It's like hand drawn looking kind of stuff and they don't really move around they just like kind of fade off into doing different actions usually it'll like one will occur at the beginning of a level or at the end of a level there really isn't any like actual cutscenes I guess like in-game video or rendered video other than the drop zones like randomly you'll like pick up a guy and teleport him out into the middle of nowhere it's pretty awesome and gruesome like there's this one where you drop a guy into like a like a, this mechanical machine that squashes like metal and you just hear this guy get like squashed to death and he's screaming and stuff it's crazy it's probably it's really awesome uh... the music sucks um... it's really generic it's something you'd expect from a current gen game um... you know it took me four hours to beat it's not that long. There's only eight levels, but in the end, it's 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 worth a rental. I would say it's an easy one thousand. So let me get under my achievement overview. Eh? All right, there's twenty achievements. Um, it took me two playthroughs to get them all. First playthrough took me like three three hours and something minutes long. Second one was actually really short, like an hour and fifteen minutes or so. Um. What I recommend doing on your first playthrough is <sighs> oh, that was a yawn. Um, your main concerns are getting all the collectibles. There's four comic books in the first four levels you need to get. They're easy to find. 
And then pretty much there's like three collectibles in each level. Um, I really suggest using a guide because I know there's going to be at least one or two that you're going to miss if you just played the game normally. So with that, um, the rest of the achievements, you're pretty much just going to happen randomly. Um, you have to get a kill from the left side, the right side, the back side, and the front side. You also have to slide attack someone. You know, there's like a lot of combat oriented ones that you'll you'll just get throughout the game. Like, uh, later you'll fight these guys that shoot nets and these, like, ropes at you. You have to basically break out of those. And they, they tell you how to do it with a tutorial, pretty much. It's really easy. And then randomly you'll encounter these things called drop zones. Basically you'll randomly grab the guy that you're fighting and teleport him to, like, this cutscene where you drop him into something or, you know, it's just like a little CG cutscene. Also, you're going to want to collect every single weapon you find. Um, how many are there? There's six weapons in the entire game, but they're not in every level. They're kind of in random levels. Um, you know, there'll be like one in the first level, then there'll be like one in like the third level. It's kind of random the way they do that, but it's pretty easy. Just use a guide for that too, I suggest. Um, then you'll have achievements, which I really suggest doing on your second playthrough, like beat the game without dying. Uh, What's another one that was pretty tricky? I think that was really the only one that was hard. Basically, don't die. Um, you know, there's also an achievement where you gotta get enough experience, like 40,000. You can't do that on your first playthrough, you gotta do that on your second. That's about it, you'll pretty much get everything else on your second playthrough. So in all, it's an easy game for achievements, don't let people tell you wrong, it's easy.